All right, guys, welcome back. So let's ho let's go through all these quantum basket names that are today. They're pulling back a little bit more from all time highs a few days ago. These stocks are in a pullback mode, and I'm pretty sure um, a lot of people are probably making jokes about the Robinhood being out. There are many platforms are act out actually today. Even volume leaders that I use uh, AWS issue are affecting many side functions. This. Yeah, this has been happening since the morning and all of these um, names that were running ahead, particularly quantum names, uh, are coming down significantly, especially IonQ, but they were already coming down um, well before. But the only thing that was holding up were Getty. So I'm going to just start with this one. So. If you guys remember, we talked about this one way from like three, four, five, six tall levels. But I was bringing up this chart. Luckily, okay, so volume leaders working today, uh, where I can show you guys the largest orders, largest clusters, blocks of orders that were coming in. And I was saying that as soon as price picks a direction, I mean these will these levels will be uh, pivotal levels. So when you see like large orders come in, I mean, if stock has already gone up 100% and you see number two, number three, number one orders come in, I mean, it's usually for me personally, it's a selling sign, it's a, a profit taking sign versus if they come in at a dip levels, if stock is pulling back or in a consolidation zone and I see those large orders, sure, then I might entertain the idea of those people being dip buyers or big block buyers and stock pushing possibly higher. I thought like these levels were sells as well right there when four and five came in, but stock pushed higher and then we saw even bigger uh, orders coming. Uh, just to give you an idea, the number one uh, that that was October 14th, $622 million order. You don't see these kind of sells even on some of the like large cap stocks. Uh, this stock's market cap is 13 billion and it hit as high as 58 from $15 to 58 in a matter of a month. Yeah, that's a big move. And this is for the stock that doesn't make any, I mean, I think we can keep talking about this one and I was talking about this one way down here as well. It doesn't matter, right? Right there. We were talking about that. Like, it doesn't matter when there's a momentum. It doesn't matter what. Uh, companies are making or if they're profitable or uh, whether um, yeah this they will turn ever profit that was not the case but the point is yeah we're pulling back is it going to come crushing down very likely possible or is it going to make it difficult is it going to just go sideways go down and up or is it going to be just straight down to 50 day chop around above 50 day and then flush back below uh, to hit the 200 day moving average. I think Rigetti at the moment, well, uh, for $42 levels has a lot more room to pull back. But very first level I'm going to be watching, you can see even my alert is right there already, um, is 20 day moving average. Okay. So just like with IonQ, which is already trading below its 50, uh, 20 day and it's approaching its 50 day moving average yellow chart on my yellow line on my chart is 50 day moving average you can see what happened as soon as it lost 50 uh, five day and 20 day moving averages uh, it started rolling over more so similar situation with your getting will it act as a support for how long and if it cracks uh, my next level of support area becomes this breakout of 34 and then straight below 50 day moving average right there at 27 ish area at the moment. So the big thing is all the options of this option expiration. So this was pretty big OPEX are gone. Uh, all those people who are pretty much causing gamma squeeze and buying crazy calls. I think the volume, most of the volume has expired because uh, I don't think uh, most of the volume was for November. I, uh, we can take a look at the open interest too and just take a look at the November op uh, option expiration for calls, the open interest volume versus 
look at the puts and open interest on puts. Uh, you'll, I mean, you you can go on. We can actually test it quickly right here too, uh, very quickly. But if it cracks 20 day, I'm gonna be watching 34 and then 28. I wanna go quickly through the, I'm not able to go through the option activity uh, on uh, unusual whales, but so far just by looking at the put to call ratio, today we still have like 20 minutes until market close, 30 minutes until market close. So far I'm seeing like calls and puts are getting sold for some reason it might be this stock still has a lot of high iv baked in and even if it comes down but it comes down in a choppy way or in a sideways move and then come down like stair steps down uh, most of these uh, people who are selling puts and calling uh, selling calls they will benefit so and it's not as significant as you would think uh, most uh, are um, but most orders are getting uh, executed at the bid, okay, puts and calls. Uh, and then, of course, there's some activity on the call side. For example, like October uh, 24th, this week, 8,000 puts traded, and these puts traded at the bid. So, which means this person probably thinks that Rigetti is going to close come this Friday uh, above 35 or 34 what was the strike price over there above 35 dollar uh, dollar uh, strike price so something like that but we're gonna go quickly through QBTS same situation identical looking chart uh, if it cracks the 20 day which is around 32 dollars I think 29 support and then it can come down towards 25. Uh, just like Ion Q, if you have already seen it, but there's one that has been already weak where they have issued a lot of, uh, they have done uh, pretty good uh, dumps offering right here, offering right here, I believe. Uh, and then, yeah, it just never recovered. It didn't go above these prices. And you can see uh, now officially anybody who bought in the past month uh, which is above $18 underwater. So this stock, Qubit Quantum Computing, this is a $3.8 billion company. Uh, if it just stays below this yellow line, which is my 50-day moving average, can come down towards 14. 14, maybe even 13 is the 200-day moving average. But I personally would get really, really bearish if it stays below this uh, $13 level and below 200 day moving average because uh, this this is the weakest looking um, quantum chart for me personally. IonQ, can it have some bounce here and maybe choppiness after reaching this two, uh, 50 day moving average? Uh, it is approaching 56 or something, 56, uh, 40 at the moment. Sure, it can. It can just go sideways, but we know same situation. There's a lot of back holders now above these prices, which means anybody who bought IonQ in the last 30 days or more or above $60 price are now underwater. Pay attention to volume. How much of a volume uh, traded during this time, during this price action zone and during this time. A lot of volume exchanged hands during that time versus all this consolidation look at the volume here and look at the volume here uh, significant volume came in here and again most of these uh, volume could have been squeezed but also it could be retail it could be us uh, traders uh, who were pretty much chasing it up and bidding it up regardless of fundamentals and pretty much uh, chasing the momentum I mean, I don't care sometimes when there's a momentum to the upside. I don't care what's going on with the business. I care about price action and I trade the price action. So for price action for these names to the downside, now it's a reversal time. Can these keep bleeding more? For sure, they can. But as a disclosure, I'll say that I don't have a position in these stocks. I might in the future trade some of these. Uh, I was thinking maybe go cheap contracts on Robinhood, Robinhood is down, 
uh, the only reason I go with like hundreds of contracts because I don't want to pay fee on other platforms to buy like options. I trade mainly options. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a time. Uh, and I was thinking maybe Qubit, but we'll see. If it chops around, it's going to kill more premium. Um, it seemed to me that compared to all of those other quantum names, this had relatively less premium baked in. So you can see IV in like low hundreds. If I take a look at like IonQ, a little bit higher, QBTS, uh, much higher. And the highest is freaking uh, Rigetti, RGTI. So yeah, that's my take for these uh, quantum computing names. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the update. Uh, take care, peace. And this is not a buy or sell recommendation purely for educational and entertainment purposes only. Take care. Peace again.